to the new session we will discuss about sclerosing bone dysplasia as a case based discussion so what are the sclerosing bone dysplasia as they are classified into dysplasia of endochondral bone formation that is osteopetrosis or peak nodosostosis or inostosis or osteopoiculosis or osteopatha striata then dysplasia of intramembranous bone formation which are nothing but camurati engelmann disease piles disease ribbing disease von buchem's disease and its variants and others are mixed sclerosing dysplasias those are miller ostosis and even overlap syndromes so coming to the first case you can see this typical diffuse osteosclerosis of the long bones even you can see those are growth arrest lines here you can see this is the typical bone in bone appearance and even the erlen meyer flash deformity involving the metadiaphyseal region of long bones that is both femora and tibia so this is classical erlen erlen meyer flash deformity of the long bones in the same case you can see there is diffuse osteosclerosis of the skull even the vault and even the visualized vertebra ribs and even the pelvic bones along with there is bulging fontanelle so this is a classical case of osteopetrosis and also this is the say other case you can see there is diffuse osteosclerosis with even pathological fractures and even diffuse osteosclerotic bands at the vertebral end plates which are typically class known as sandwich vertebra so this is diffuse osteosclerosis with pathological fractures and this is diffuse horizontal bands of osteosclerosis that are de de at the level of vertebral end plates referred as sandwich vertebra so there are two type of osteopetrosis type 1 there will be uniform sclerosis of the long bones type 2 there will have clear classical endobone or bone in bone appearance or sandwich vertebra as we have seen in this case next case you can see there is diffuse sclerosis of the skull even the skull vault there is even obtuse angle you can see this is the obtuse angle normally there should be acute angle but here there is obtuse angle of the mandible and also there are fontanelle are patent along with patent sutures in the same case you can see there is this is the pa radiograph of the hand showing dense bones and even shortened distal tufts you can see shortened distal tufts with acroosteolysis so this is the typical acroosteolysis and also along with that you can see there is increased bone density with narrowed or absent medullary cavity so this is a classical case of peak nodosostosis so we'll try to see the differences between osteopetrosis and peak nodosostosis here you can see the differentiating points between osteopetrosis and peak nodosostosis osteopetrosis there have been infantile that is autosomal recessive form and adult is autosomal dominant form peak nodosostosis is autosomal recessive trait with mutation in cathepsin k gene sclerosis involving medullary cavity or canal is common in osteopetrosis uncommon in peak nodosostosis clinical presentation anemia and hepatosplenomegaly is common in osteopetrosis uncommon in peak nodosostosis bone in bone appearance in sandwich vertebra are common in osteopetrosis they are not commonly seen in peak nodosostosis and typically mandibular angle the mandibular angle is normal acute in osteopetrosis and it is obtuse mandibular angle in peak nodosostosis hypoplasia of the distal phalanges or acroosteolysis is commonly seen in peak nodosostosis not seen in osteopetrosis and even bony sclerosis involving the transverse process of the vertebral bodies is commonly seen in osteopetrosis and there will be sparing of the transverse process those uh, bony sclerosis will not involve the transverse process in peak nodosostosis and increased risk of fractures or post op complication is common in osteopetrosis less commonly seen in peak nodosostosis next case you can see there is thick undulating ridges of bone or even bone sclerosis typically involving the metaca meta metacarpals and even it is also involving the carpal bones even the phalanges and this typically is it is in the sclerotomal distribution it is typically sclerotome or dermatomal distribution and it is almost involved in the carpal bones and it is also crossing the joints to involve the adjacent long bones and this typically mimicking the candle wax appearance and this is a classical case of miller ostosis so this is are the other cases of miller ostosis here also see the radiograph of the hand showing thick undulating bony sclerosis typically having a sclerotomal distribution and even the crossing the joints and here also it's involving the femur crossing the hip joint and involving the acetabulum and even the pelvic bones so, so this is also mimicking candle wax appearance and these are other cases of miller ostosis next case you can see this is the long bones skeletal survey and this is the standing radiograph of the patient 
thanks to dr shashank chapala for contributing this case you can see there is symmetrical bilateral symmetrical sclerosis involving the diaphysis sparing the epiphysis so typically there is diaphysial sclerosis involving all the long bones so these are, we can see the zoom images you can see there is diaphysial sclerosis that is bilateral symmetrical involving all the long bones with sparing of the epiphysis so this is a classical case of camurati angelman disease or progressive diaphysial dysplasia so we, we will try to see the three different cases so this is already the we have seen this is the progressive diaphysial dysplasia case and here there is other case which is miller ostosis and this one is other case which will be differential for progressive diaphysial dysplasia you can see this is the progressive diaphysial dysplasia where there will be bilateral bilateral symmetrical diaphysial sclerosis involving the diaphysis long bones with sparing of epiphysis here this is a case of miller ostosis where you can see the thick undulating bony sclerosis making candle wax appearance and there will be this is not symmetrical mostly asymmetrical and this will also involve the epiphysis where in diaphysial uh, progressive diaphysial dysplasia the epiphysis are spared here this is also have a typical sclerotomal distribution but where is in uh, progressive diaphysial dysplasia there will be no sclerotomal distribution and also typically miller ostosis can cross the joint and involve the other bones here it will most of the times doesn't cross the other bones so these are the two differentiating these are the differentiating points between progressive diaphysial dysplasia and miller ostosis and here this is other case where is a infant you can see there is diffuse periosteal thickening periosteal elevation remodeling and even expansion of the long bones this is a classical case of caffey's disease or infantile cortical hyperostosis this can also mimic progressive diaphysial dysplasia next case you can see there is diffuse endosteal and periosteal thickening involving the diaphysis of the tibia and also this is the mri where you can see there is hypo intense diaphysial sclerosis with medullary cavity narrowing thanks to dr manish raj patak for contributing this case this is a classical case of hereditary multiple diaphysial sclerosis or ribbing disease so this uh, hereditary multiple diaphysial sclerosis also remember uh, resembles progressive diaphysial dysplasia but unilateral or asymmetrical involvement and asynchronous bilateral involvement of long bones is seen in ribbing's disease which can differentiate this ribbing disease from progressive diaphysial dysplasia next case you can see there are multiple round to oval spherical areas of sclerosis involving adjacent to the joints typically periarticular distribution here also you can see these are periarticular distribution here also you can see there are multiple bony sclerosis involving periarticular distribution they are symmetrical in the periarticular location so these are multiple bony islands or anastosis and they there can be spherical or ovoid they can be clustered around the long bones and adjacent to the joints and they are aligned along the trabeculae they are really, they, they are aligned along parallel to the trabeculae so this is a case of osteopoiclosis and even osteopoiclosis is most commonly associated with osteopathy striata or even medulla ostosis which is nothing but overlap syndromes or mixed sclerosing dysplasias here also other case where you can see these are multiple elongated oval shaped bony sclerosis typically adjacent to the joints in periarticular location and they are oriented along the trabeculae so this is a classical case of osteopathy striata next case you can see there is diffuse bony sclerosis involving the uh, skull bones even there is narrowing of the skull foramina and even decrease in the medullary uh, mastoid decrease in the mastoid air spaces and even there is decrease and narrowing of the inner ear structures and even semicircular canals so these patients will commonly presented with uh, craniopalsies uh, this is an elderly patient presented with craniopalsies and this is a classical case of von buchem disease or hyperostosis corticalis generali generalizata thanks to dr narsimha murthy sir for contributing this case Thank you all.